Hello students welcome back to good learners the chapter that we are covering today is called civilizing the natives educating the nation in this chapter we learn about the educational reforms that occurred in india after the advent of the british rule let's begin so we learned from the previous chapter that the british rule affected a whole lot of people rajas nawabs tribals peasants etc but their rule brought changes in the lives of students and teachers as well they were on a cultural mission a mission to civilize the natives they considered us indians as the people who needed civilization our customs and values had to be reformed and how did they do that we learn further now in 1783 william jones arrived in calcutta he was a renowned scholar in law and was also a linguist now who are linguists they study different languages he was fascinated by sanskrit persian arabic and wanted to learn more he also started learning about ancient indian texts philosophy medicine and other sciences now other british officials who were interested in learning joined him too they together set up asiatic society of bengal and also started a journal called asiatic researches they shared deep respect for india and believe that it is important to discover the ancient texts and understand their meanings and translations which would further lead to development in india some british officials felt that it is important for indians to learn their own texts rather than learning british alien culture and so with this view madrasas were set up to learn arabic persian and islamic law and hindu college was established to study ancient sanskrit texts However there were some british officials who criticized the orientalist vision of learning according to them knowledge of the east was full of errors and unscientific thought to them eastern literature was non serious and making people learn that would be a waste of time and efforts they also believed that the aim of education was to teach what's useful and practical Thomas Babington Macaulay was a huge critic of orientalism. He said it's important to teach English language and the British should stop wasting public money on teaching eastern learning and culture. The English Education Act was introduced in 1835 through which English was compulsorily made the medium of instruction in schools and higher education. Now English textbooks were circulated in schools. Then in 1854 an educational dispatch was sent to the governor general of India it came to be known as woods dispatch it outlined the educational policy that had to be followed in India which highlighted the practical benefits of european learning woods dispatch argued that european learning would improve the taste and desire of indians hence improving their moral character Various reforms were brought about in higher education and school education following this dispatch. Now we take a look at the local school system that existed before these reforms. So in the 1830s William Adam produced a report. Now according to this report there were several pathshalas in India with not more than 20 students under one teacher or guru. These institutions were flexible Now by flexible we mean that there was no fixed fee no regular timetable no printed books etc classes did not happen during the harvest season as students would help their parents in the harvest fee depended upon the income of the parents now through this flexible system every child could study however this had to change after 1854 new reforms were introduced to improve the system of vernacular education parchalas that accepted the new rules were given grants from the government others didn't hence gurus lost their independence and education became difficult for the poor now when we talk of educating the nation it just wasn't limited to the british officials some scholars and thinkers from india too believed that we needed a wider spread of education they were impressed with the developments that the europeans did and they urged the british to open more schools colleges and universities mahatma gandhi however argued that colonial education was not all good 
it created a sense of inferiority in the minds of the indians and that indians tend to forget their own culture and appreciate and imitate the west he focused on the importance of learning indian languages and practical learning rather than textbook learning now mahatma gandhi was completely against colonial education but there were other set of thinkers like rabindranath tagore who were of a different view tagore started shanti niketan as an institution in 1901 as a response to suffocating and oppressive school system he was of the view that childhood should involve self learning which would improve the student's imagination and curiosity shanti niketan was his abode of peace in a rural setting where children could be creative while learning tagore and mahatma gandhi had similar thinking when it came to this but rabindranath tagore believed in combining the elements of western learning with that of our learning he was of the view that art music and dance should be taught with science and technology however the debate over what should become the base of national education continued till after independence now with this we come to the end of the chapter if you have any questions drop it in the comment section and subscribe to good learners for more